A warm good evening to one and all. Today we are here to discuss on the book Trailblazers of the Travancore Plantations by Sunita Srinivasan. And I invite you all on behalf of DC Books to this panel discussion. Speaking about the book, it is a product of extensive research and personal experiences. It speaks about the Idiki district back in the 1960s, especially areas like Pirumed, Vandipiriya, Chindala, and Kutikan. The transformation of Idiki from the dense jungles and rough terrains to what it is now. A bustling hub of tea estates, dairy farming, and tourism is traced in this book. The contributions of the Scottish Sahibs, with the constant support of the royal family of Travancore, has created Idiki into a center of education as well. Special mention to the Kallivailal family for giving education prime importance and working for the social cause for many generations. The DC organization has also taken up this responsibility by opening up the DC School of Management and Architecture Architect College at Wagaman. Now, without further delay, I'm I'm going to hand over the space to the author herself, Ms. Sunita Srinivasan, who will introduce the speakers for the day. Thank you very much, Grace. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to log into this webinar. I spent the first 10 years of my life in Pirmed. And this pocket of Idiki district and the wonderful people there are deeply embedded in my heart. It is a fascinating district and it has seen tremendous change in the last hundred years. The development of this district has been made possible by several wonderful people. This book is a tribute to them. It also attempts to portray a picture of a gracious life that we will never see again. It is an honor and great privilege to have Nikhil Raghavan, Christopher Doyle, Joseph Kalavelil, and Sri Kumar Varma on this panel to discuss the trailblazers of the Travancore plantations published by DC Books. Trailblazers of the Travancore plantations is a project that was conceived over two years ago. And Nikhil Raghavan has been a part of every step of the way. Nikhil is one of the senior most editors and journalists in this country. He worked for the Hindu for over 25 years. He is currently the chief communication officer at Surana and Surana International Attorney Chennai. Nikhil will now introduce the participants and take the discussion further. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, DC Books. And thank you, Sunita, for this wonderful introduction. I have uh, been associated with uh, Sunita for many, many years uh, during her stay here in Chennai and uh, have been uh, watching the progress that she's been making in different spheres of her life, which now also includes being an author. It is very interesting from a marketing person to a industrialist to an author. There's been a great journey for Sunita and uh, I'm proud to be associated with her in this little journey of hers. Uh, I have with me here in this panel three eminent personalities, each one a stalwart by himself and who have also contributed in some way or the other to Sunita's growth. She's known them, she's been associated with them, 
and people like Joseph Kaliwailal, Christopher Doyle, and Sri Kumar Varma, they've all been part of this journey to bring this wonderful book out by DC. First, let me bring in uh, Christopher Doyle. I will bring uh, these um, wonderful gentlemen one by one and introduce them before they uh, you know, take over the mic and talk about their journey and some experiences that they have uh, in, in the subject matter which Sunita has addressed in this book. So first, over to Christopher. Christopher is uh, an extremely successful professional. He has headed the Hilton Group. He's on the board of directors of the Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta. And he has authored over half a dozen novels. And I understand most of them dwell on the Mahabharata secret series. Surprisingly, he's also a musician. Well, maybe I should ask him to sing a few songs in this panel to add color to this entire proceedings. But to you, Chris, and you can talk about a uh, journey that you've also experienced in your personal life as, as well as with uh, Sunita in this little book that she's written. Over to you. Chris. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nikhil, for that uh, very warm introduction. Uh, and uh, well, Sunita and I go back many, many, many years, more than I care to, care to count now. But uh, yeah, we've known each other for a long time. And I still remember when she was when she was writing this book, uh, how animated she was about about the the subject, the the theme, uh, the research that she was doing. And and I'm extremely proud um, as both as a, as an author and a friend to to have been a part of uh, this journey of Sunita's, uh, to which has culminated now in in the release of this book. So uh, I think one of the things uh, as, as I'm speaking now as an as an author uh, who uh, whose books are semi historical. So I. I've dabbled a little bit in history, though I write complete fiction, unlike Sunita's book, which is fantastic, uh, fantastically researched nonfiction. But the way I look at it is one of the things that differentiates us as humans is our ability to record our history. And, and yet, somehow, as a race, as a species, we, we're not really good at it. And this cuts across cultures, cuts across countries, uh, cuts across peoples. Uh, there are gaps in in the historical narrative across across the centuries, and even as recently as maybe you know a hundred years ago or one hundred and fifty years ago. And when I when I say history, I I use the word not not in the sense that I studied in, in school, for example, where it was all about dates and people and wars and, um, and changes of, uh, you know, and political, uh, you know, history. I'm not using history in, in that sense. The, the term that I'm using is, is the history that people really want to read about. One of the reasons why uh, I've, I've loved history, but I used to hate this part of history, you know, mugging up dates for the exams. And, and everyone does. But there is an aspect of history that people are interested in, and that's when history becomes a narration. And it's a narration not of dry dates and people's names, but it's about experiences. It's about what we as humans go through um, in our various journeys. It's how those journeys uh, you know, meet, intersect, and, and what happens at those intersections. It's about anecdotes from the past. It's about uh, you know, things that people did, their achievements, uh, dare I say it, to use a cliche, blood, sweat, and tears. But it's all about you know, what people did, the insurmounted obstacles that they overcame, their achievements, their failures, how they dealt with them, the emotional side of it, their successes. And, a lot of this also explains the reason why historical fiction is so popular. And, and we see a lot of that uh, in India itself today on Indian uh, historical themes. You've got some brilliant fiction being written, which fictionalizes the lives of uh, popular characters, uh, popular in the Indian imagination. And the reason for that is because people want to know about these experiences. They want to know 
what it felt like to be that character, what that character would have gone through. Um, and, and it's very interesting. There's a debate on nowadays, which I, I found fascinating. Um, Alberto, Alberto Angela recently released a biography of Cleopatra. And this is supposed to be a biography, so it's supposed to be historical nonfiction. But the big debate is about the parts of Cleopatra's life that uh, Alberto Angela has fictionalized. And, uh, and it's a huge debate because people, people like it. And the reason why they like it is exactly this. It's not, it's not the, his, the dry history of, of what someone did you know, uh, so many years ago, but it's about, it's about the emotional side, the, the human side, uh, which is where the connection really lies between readers. And, and I think that uh, this kind of nonfiction, this kind of historical narrative is extremely rare nowadays. This kind of genre, which brings history places, people, all of these to life, paints pictures which the reader can, you know, can then visualize and, uh, and connect with. This is extremely rare nowadays. And I think that's, this is exactly where Sunita's book fills a much, you know, fills a gap. It's a much needed book. And, uh, and I, 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 don't, I don't know, I think I'd be a novice. I wouldn't like to say I know uh, how many books have been written about, uh, the locations that she's uh, she's mentioned in a book, but I would imagine not a lot because of the rarity of this kind of genre. And uh, and I think anybody reading Sunita's book is really really going to find uh, that richness, the texture of history coming to life. And and I think that's that's the enjoyable part. I think that's what readers really want. And and I think that's what readers are going to get uh, from her book. Thank you. Uh, please unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chris, for that lovely introduction and for the lovely um, story about uh, historical facts and how history and fiction and fact, everything gets merged together in today's um, books, which a lot of authors come about. But more importantly, Sunita has written a lot on this area which very very unique area of uh, our country where uh, so much of history has taken place many many years ago and i don't think uh, many many books have been written about uh, this locality which is where uh, my uh, next uh, uh, panelist who would uh, speak extensively on the location comes from mr joseph kaliwailil he and his family have been part of the community for almost a century there their contribution to the region in the fields of education and medical care are immeasurable. The Kaliwailil family have, an sense, in a sense, inherited the legacy of fostering education and medical facilities in the region that the royal family began. Joseph heads Glenrock Rubber Products. The family also owns a beautiful resort called Misty Mountain, situated in their tea estate in Kutikanam, which is one of the focus areas of Sunita's book. Over to you, Joseph, to talk about your lovely locality. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, I would like to take you back about 50 years to 1969, 1970. That's the time I knew Sinita. My younger sister and myself were around, I mean, I was older than Sunita, but my younger sister and Sunita were around the same age. And uh, we used to play together. And then uh, I think after Sunita's parents used to call them Pat and Pat, Auntie, Auntie Pat and Srini Uncle. When they left the district, lost touch with Sunita and Fast forward 50 years, and a few months back, Sunita got in touch. And uh, she mentioned that she was writing a book. And I was really happy to collaborate in any. And 
it was really nice to connect when uh, sunita is writing a book i would i it's a mystery i don't know what's in the book but i would really think it's going to be full of anecdotes and stories because it was a really colorful uh, time you know in when the british and after the british when the plantations had its you know glory day wonderful people who passed through the estates and times change and you know the glory days started fading away and today the plantations are nothing glamorous nothing it's just a uh, way of life now uh, the lot of plantations are not well maintained or well kept a uh, lot of them are in the financial uh, doldrums some others are managed well and running well but things are not uh, all that bad in the town i live in in kutikanam uh, the school which my father helped set up in the 1960s a uh, convent school which my dad envisaged that you know uh, the uh, children of planters and you know well heeled families of kerala were sending their children to uti and kodaikanal to study so he thought why not you know get uh, 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 a convent uh, a bunch a group of sisters to come and set up a school they did they came on set up a school and uh, including myself and sunita our first school was the saint pius school and uh, saint pius school still exists and is running very well they have now uh, uh, is more than a residential school it's a day school and they uh, uh, the students are all from the locality and uh, it's really good that uh, you know the children of the locality have uh, access to good english standard english education with the uh, the icse syllabus so the children have uh, you know all the facilities that children in uh, bigger towns and cities have also kutikanam uh, has now become an, a center of education uh, there is a very good college called the meridian college one of the top 100 colleges in the country we have an engineering college we have a technical school and uh, another school which uh, uh, caters to the children who want to do the state syllabus and uh, yeah so uh, Yes, Kutikaram is a good place. I mean, a place where earlier you saw a lot of plantation workers. Now you see students. So uh, of course, now with COVID days, uh, the students are all at home, and uh, Kutikaram is back to its sleepy little town. And uh, talking about healthcare, yes, uh, the Medical Trust Hospital in uh, Mundakayam was set up in the early 60s. my father was one of the uh, gentlemen who was part of the four committee i must add that uh, the medical trust is set up on 15 acres of land which belonged to the uh, company called travanco rubber and tea uh, which was managed by the uh, aspenwall and company which belonged to the royal family <laughs> and uh, they donated 15 acres of land uh, thanks to the gen, gen, then uh, general manager mr kl kersha and uh, my uncle jos kalvelen was the man instrumental in uh, setting up the hospital and uh, he even uh, went abroad in those days in the early 60s to England and Germany to get uh, donations by way of equipment for the hospital, and all the plantations in those days, uh, in because the plantations were doing well, they all contributed to set up the hospital, and uh, 
a hospital which served the uh, the small farmers and the uh, estate workers this slowly evolved into a, again a countryside hospital with primary health care and uh, uh, of course they have developed and they have uh, you know uh, specialty doctors also now and uh, when covid struck uh, they were have they had a were able to set up a second line of uh, treatment uh, so uh, yes it is a quite a good uh, hospital for the you know for the countryside and uh, i won't take up too much more time because i know there's uh, other people to talk and uh, uh, i'm sure that uh, there are a lot of uh, good things good anecdotes interesting anecdotes in the book and i can't wait to get my hands on it thank you back back to you thank you <laughs> thank you thank you joseph uh, that was a very interesting uh, aspect of uh, estate life that you spoke about which took me back to my own uh, younger days when i spent considerable amount of time uh, where my dad was uh, in the plantations in wayanad and subsequently in anamales so i have a uh, lot of tea in my blood uh, and i, I really uh, uh, miss those uh, days in the plantations and that was one of the things which also interested me to uh, help uh, sunita out a lot when she was writing these stories which were based on uh, the plantation life and uh, you know about the the managers and the people working in those estates which uh, took me back to my own uh, on days but the person or um, person who was part of a family which originally owned the land in those areas is with us uh, shri kumar varma is a playwright novelist short story writer literary critic and okay he is a well rounded personality in the literary field more importantly he is also a prince of the travancore royal family who were the original owners of the land this book is all about over to you shri good friend you're on mute you're on mute now <laughs> all right now am i audible Yes, yeah, you are audible. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Nikhil, and um, Sunita. When you say the trailblazers of the Travancore uh, estates, I think now you can add yourself to that list because this, what you have done right now, is uh, you are you are continuing the line of trailblazers. This book is going to uh, blaze a trail. Um, Pyramid. Uh, unfortunately, I have never ever visited. that place um uh, the family uh, my grandfather used to uh, you know spot very interesting places and build uh, uh places there where uh, the, uh, we uh, the family used to sort of travel and uh, uh, kovalam for example and uh, poten kod so uh, during the uh, the hot months uh, the uh, hot weather uh, the entire family used to sort of you know pack up everything and uh, go to um, pyramid and the highway would be sort of cordoned off and uh, there would be this uh, caravan of cars and uh, the vehicles going in and uh, i believe they used to be about uh, 25 that is a small number compared to what they had earlier but uh, 25 people um, sort of in attendance for the maharani and uh, the rest of the people also had their stuff uh, but once you reached there um, it was almost like being in the wilds it was that was really pioneering work for the royal family to you know sort of uh, cut through the swathe of uh, foliage and uh, discover a snake which uh, my mother used to talk about this uh, when we uh, uh, were used to holiday in kunur in the early days Uh, she said um, we uh, we used to have you know uh, uh, wolves and jackals sort of you know uh, outside at about 8:30 in the night and she'd say if you think this was uh, uh, scary you should have been in pyramid when we uh, uh, traveled there so the kitchen was away from the main building and uh, uh, it was really scary because after about 7:00 uh, it would go very dark and 
uh, you can imagine the sort of sounds uh, you could hear. Uh, and my grandfather, I think, um, uh, was in touch with the people in the club uh, almost next door. And uh, I think there was golfing and things like that which happened. Uh, but this uh, uh, this caravan of uh, reaching there was uh, always spoken about. Even my um, other relatives used to talk about that. Uh, about um, within the last fifteen years, there was a uh, an uncle of mine. That's my um, grandmother's nephew. Uh, he had gone there with a cousin of mine from Bangalore, Lakshmi Raghunandan. And uh, uh, four of them had traveled to uh, Pyramid and uh, they had met the family who was there. And uh, interestingly, they found uh, they were asked to come for lunch, I think. And they, as they were having lunch, they noticed a uh, newspaper cutting framed and kept on the wall. And um, so he said, uh, do you know this person who wrote this? And they said, yes, he's my nephew, because that was an article which I had written about my grandmother in the uh, Hindu and they had framed it and kept it. So I, I thought that was amazing, the sort of respect that they still had for somebody who uh, was there so many years ago. And uh, uh, I think a lot of people have uh, already forgotten about that golden age of uh, the, um, the Travancore uh, rule. So uh, I promised myself that I would go and visit this place. But unfortunately, I have never been able to visit. I've visited all the other places where, uh, including Velayani, Poten Code, and all those places. But uh, never Pyramid, which I think I look forward to after the uh, pandemic uh, opens up routes. I think uh, that's one thing that I look forward to. Historically, also, I think uh, it's been a very important place because um, during the time when the um, the um, Newspaper Regulation Act came in and there was a lot of opposition to it. There were a lot of demonstrations and things like that. Uh, grandmother was actually there in uh, Pyramid. And when she came back, uh, she faced all this um, uh, demonstration. So this was almost like a, you know, going away and, you know, a, a sort of uh, uh, a spot where you could sort of reflect on the things that you are um, uh, uh, on the affairs of state. And then you come back, and then you face the actual heat. Um, and um, um, yeah, uh, this was particularly interesting, because at that point of time, during the Regency, when this happened, this registration, uh, newspaper registration uh, act, uh, she was pregnant. And she was pregnant with my mother. So that is very interesting to me at that point of time. Historically, I think that was very interesting because uh, I, and, uh, I mean, it, it's a sort of uh, a line which I still sort of uh, think about. Uh, 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 historically, sort of, uh, it, it's written about and there's so much of um, uh, uh, the new, that, that, uh, that point, that, Part of history had made such a lot of waves in that uh, at that time, and uh, uh, I, I, I uh, feel that I'm sort of a part of the entire thing, and I should go back there. And I think I thank Sunita for sort of uh, you know pointing me in that direction right now, or I don't know whether I would have uh, you know even uh, thought of going back and looking at those places. Um, so thank you so much, Sunita, and thank you, Nikhil, and uh, all of you. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, Sri. Thank you. That was very nice of uh, of uh, you know recalling the uh, the royal days of uh, the, of your. Uh, do we still have a few minutes left, um, uh, Grace? Govind, are you online? Do we still have a couple of minutes left? Yeah, we have. We do. Okay, I wanted uh, Sunita back. I, I wanted Sunita back to talk about uh, what prompted her and what what sort of gave her that little push to write this whole uh, this book. Sunita, back to you. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, the reason for writing the book is extremely simple. 
I love Pyramid. I always have. I always will. But as I was listening to Shri Kumar, there's something wonderful that I have to tell people that's happened during the writing of this book. It's brought me and just so many people together that it's incredible. So Shri Kumar was talking about this newspaper cutting from the Hindu. Now, besides the fact that Nikhil has worked for the Hindu all his life, that newspaper cutting is in Joseph's house, and I have seen it. <laughs> so this is the way this book has brought so many people together. It's been more than writing of a book. It's been the most incredible experience of my life. I hope my readers will also enjoy it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Thank you so much, Sunita. And we all, uh, all of us here, that Joseph, Chris, Sri Kumar, and the rest of the uh, people, uh, wonderful people at DC Books, wish you a uh, great success with this book and a wonderful journey ahead with more books in the same genre or else to come by. Thank you so much, uh, DC and Grace. Over to you. First of all, I'd like to thank Sunita for giving us this uh, wonderful book. It has been a pleasure to be involved in this book, and I hope to see many more coming from you. Uh, I would like—I would now like to thank all the panelists for coming together despite uh, your busy schedules and participating in this enriching discussion. Thank you all. The book will be out next month, and we are all very excited about it. So once again, thank you all uh, for this discussion. Yeah. Thank you, thank Grace. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks, gentlemen. Thanks. Thanks, Sunita. Thank you all very much. Yeah.